Okay, so I I want to stab Loki. I don't remember who said it, but actually a lot of people said it. Don't name your server Loki. You know, you're only going to have problems. But, you know, I disagree. I think no matter what your server's name is, you'll always have some sort of a problem. It's not a question of whether or not you're going to have a problem. It's the question of whether or not you can figure out how to fix the problem, right? Like, if something breaks, do you have the mental capacity to put it together and or Google <laughs> what you need to do to put it together? Long story as short as possible. I know that's a rare occasion for me. But you gotta bear with me here, okay? I've been super busy, a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I've been doing, building a computer for work, for example, took a lot of time and it was rushed, so I couldn't even really make that much content over it. And I even tried to live stream it and that kind of failed miserably. So, you know, hi, welcome to Bite My Bits. Wait, roll intro. <laughs> What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bye Bye Bits, and in today's video, let's talk about how I have no idea how to fix my server. However, I'm going to take you down the path of which I am going to figure it out as soon as I figure it out. And hopefully, while I'm making this video, I'll figure it out. Obviously, there's no guarantee, but I am not 100% against nuking Unraid at this point, because I have spent two hours on it. I mean, you know, we're not talking a lot, but two solid, like hard hours were spent on this thus far. So here's what happened. Last night, while I was messing around, I realized that when I upgraded to 6.9 with Unraid, that ever since then, I haven't had a need to access my mapped drives in my Windows machine that connects to a different subnet, right? I have 192.168.2 is my primary subnet and 10.10.10. You know, whatever is my secondary subnet. Now I use the secondary subnet for like a dedicated backhaul for communication between, you know, data heavy devices, things like my NAS, my Unraid server, and my main computer. God, you know how hard it is to hold up those three with my pinky being all messed up. Seriously, I, I had surgery. So like I have a short tendon, it, it's, it's brutal. So I noticed that my 10.10.10 .10 subnet was not working. I could not connect to it. And I thought to myself, well, Jason, before you go to bed, let's just fix it. I log in. I can't get it to work. I'd reset a bunch of things. I finally say, screw it. I'm just going to assign the primary subnet to the, to the 10 gig and then just have two IPs and then screw the whole deal. If you guys don't already know, sometimes when I get frustrated with problems, I just say, screw it and nuke it. You know, start anew, start fresh. Screw it! So I changed some networking things to automatic and they didn't work. But I still had my primary IP that was working. It's a static assigned. I have it set in Unraid. It's static. I also have it routed in PFSense. It's static. Like, you know, that's always, that's my home bit. It always works. You know, that's my homie. That's, that's my OG. It always connects. It always works. So what did I do? I reset it at all. I just took everything and made everything automatic. I hit save, I reboot the server, and then that's it. It was dead, gone, could not access it. It just, you know, it was just like, thank you, next. Was that dumb? I feel that that was dumb. I mean, look at this just, okay, why is this not working? I don't understand this, right? This does not make sense. Look at this. It pulls an automatic IP address. This is one of four NICs that I have, four ports. I have two on the motherboard and I got two 10 gig ports. This is just one of them. I had three or four, no, I had three plugged in. I unplugged all the other ones and I plugged in just the one and I've tried every single port and I cannot get it to work. Even though I set it to automatic and it pulls DHCP, it will not connect on any NIC, any port, none of it. I can see it. But it won't. I can see it here. This is this is me booting and GUI, right? From the console. I actually plugged in a freaking monitor and a keyboard and it will not work. I just don't get it. It's at this point, if you haven't figured it out already, I start going a little. <laughs> Why do you hate me? Why? Why? Why is this a thing? I've tested this. This won't work. So here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. Check this out. I'm gonna unplug this again. I'm gonna plug it into the other port. 
Okay, look at it's all lit up. Look at that. It's working. It's working. Okay, let's refresh. Okay, let's refresh again. Refresh again. Let's keep refreshing. Click it faster. So the automatic lost its IP address. Now let's go to the next port, the one that I plugged it into. Ah, what is this? What is this? This isn't even my subnet. 169.25. What is this? Why is it doing? Okay, let's try. Let's try one of the 10 gig ports. Okay, here we go. One of the 10 gig. There we go. There we go. Let's see. 10 gig. It was at the top or the bottom? I think it was the top. Yeah, it was the top. What is going on? Now, what you see here is the network configuration file. Right, it's basically, I, I to get to it, you type in nano boot config network.cfg, right? That brings this up, and then you can edit it. And the thing is, is I've had this thing for so long that it has so many like different things, like Rise 10, right? That was this one. This is a Ryzen one that I, I used temporarily because it was 10 gig, right? But it came out of the Ryzen system, so I called it the Ryzen one. But you know, it's not there anymore. It's labeled BR4 and every time I boot this thing up, it says BR4 not found. I gotta be completely honest with you right now. I'm a little nervous to delete this file. I kind of sort of want to delete it and just be like, eh, YOLO. But you know, on the other side, I'm a little nervous. So instead, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rename it <laughs> and then hopefully it rebuilt itself. So that is essentially, let's see. Uh, let's go instead of nano, we're going to do C D. Not a directory. Dumbass. Of course that's not a directory. Jesus. There we go. L S. Look here. There's your configurations right there, buddy. Yeah. Now totally not Googling anything. Let's say R. I think it's rename. Yeah, it's gotta be rename. Net work dot c o no c f g so i'm going to rename network.cfg to net work dot c f uh what do i call it what do i call it what do i call it f c f f f for respect Let's see if that works r n no okay <laughs> See, I tricked you, right? I made you think that I thought it was RN for rename, when in reality, I knew this entire time without Googling that it was MV. See, I totally knew that. Let's do an LS now. LS. Network.cff. Now, just to reboot. Reboot. Booting, 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 I got to keep on booting. I don't understand how something can pull a DHCP IP address from the PFSense router and not be able to get connected to from anything on the network. I don't understand that. I've been messing with this for so long. <sighs> the only thing you can do sometimes is just burn it and rebuild it. Come on, what do we, just clean this. Never mind. never mind. I'm not gonna draw something. That'd be bad. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, gooey, gooey, gooey. I want to see the gooey. R O O T. Yeah. Root password. Let's go to settings. Let's go to network settings. Come on, what do we got here? I. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So. Okay, so here is my PFSense, right? I'm refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. For some reason, it does not show 184, even though it shows it. Let's see. I got Loki right here, right? Dot two thri dot two three five. Let's go to that. Let's see if this works. It's not showing 184 and 235 is not working. Oh, cannot be read. Okay, okay, fine. So 235 doesn't work. Let's see if we can find another Loki. Ah, here's another one. Broadcam, this is .e2. It's not even the right 
Mac. But whatever, whatever. I'm just gonna I'm gonna try this one. Let's let's try 207. Okay, you know what? How about this? I'm gonna unplug it from this one. I'm gonna go back to my boo. This is the first one, the first port. This one always works for me. I'm gonna plug it in there and I'm gonna see if this thing recognizes it. If you hit refresh really, really, really fast, it fixes it faster. Now, none of these are actually, I don't know which one that is since it like reset them all, but like IP4 address, I gotta set this to automatic, right? I'm gonna apply that and IP automatic and apply. DNS server, IP4 address, automatic, automatic, automatic. And this one is, this one is, okay, now it's automatic. Last one. So all four of them are set to automatic now. It doesn't matter what I plug the dang thing into, it should automatically pull one. Okay, so this time, look at this. All right, Etho one. What is this? What, what, what is this? Where is this number coming from? This is, it's all connected. This, what the, what is this? What is this? Oh wait, it changed. It was sitting on the, like, something random. Now it's 2.2. .2. Anything below 100 is like ones that I set static in PFSense. So let's try that. I can't do that with my eyes closed. I'm gonna hit something. Okay, so I got it to work. I don't know why. I'll talk about that in a second, but now I wanna hook up. I know, my thing is, is super messy, but I wanna hook up my 10 gig, and I'm gonna see if I can get the 10 gig to work. So for some reason, it's this one right here. So I'm just gonna name this 10 G B for 10 gig bottom. Right, and instead of this being automatic, I'm gonna set it to static. I'm going to do the subnet that I want, which is 10. And then I'm gonna delete the gateway, because that doesn't matter. And let's see, bonding, bridging. Yes, Etho 4 apply now let's see if my 10 gig works 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot oh, login works network four root test and control paste oh there we go there we go <laughs> nice now you might be asking yourself how exactly did jason just fix that that's a great question i'll explain it to you i have no yeah. This all started out with 10 gig breaking, me trying to fix it, failing, saying screw it, resetting all the DHCPs to automatic, losing and breaking everything even worse, having Plex and Unraid down for a day, which sucked, and the only way I could figure out how to fix it was to literally delete, well, in this case, back up the configuration file just in case, you know, all hell broke loose, and just let Unraid rebuild the network configuration file itself. And that's it. And then of course, you know, you gotta you gotta like like let it do its thing, configure a couple things, just reset them back up. But the settings were all the same as far as automatic. When I did automatic, my PFSense finally assigned it the correct IP address, which kind of irritated me because even when I like manually set a static IP address, it still would not work with the assigned IP address. So I don't get that. But what I do know is that deleting that and starting over worked. <sighs> well, that's it. I am working on these Plex client videos. I swear I'm trying. <laughs> but I bought this splitter thing, duplicator, that is supposed to allow me to split it and then it only works in 1080p. It's, it's kind of a thing. Anyways, if you guys want to tell me anything, just leave them in the comments down below. I think I'm going to leave this right here. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. I don't know why you would, though. <laughs> and have yourself a good day.